Hello everyone. In the last video we looked at how to record credit sales and credit purchases in Maya. This time we're taking the next logical step after that um, and that is a purchase return or a sales return. So in the event that uh, someone comes into our store and buys something, maybe isn't too happy with it and returns it to us, um, if we want to give them a refund, how do we put that into mild? Now the flip side of that, of course, is if we buy something from a supplier and maybe it's broken uh, during transit and when we receive the items, they're not in saleable condition, we can return those to the supplier um, and uh, request a refund. So how would we do that in mild? Let's look at that. Um, before we get into that, we've actually got to record the purchase. Uh, if, we, if we want to do a purchase return, we have to have a purchase. Um, so this will be a little bit of recap of the previous two videos as well. I'm not going to spend very long on it though. Alright, so step one, recording a purchase and a payment. So we've bought some spring water from Cool Springs on credit. We've been given payment information and account and tax code information. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in nice and quickly. So the supplier is Cool Springs PD. Uh, so we put that up here. The date's already correct. Purchase order number is 901. Supplier invoice number is 41. Now, a little bit of time I just want to spend on the layout. So in, in purchases and sales, there are different layouts you can choose. Uh, the two that we're going to focus on are the service and the item layout. Let's look at the difference. In the service layout, we have a description field, an account field, and an amount field. So in the description field, we just put a brief description as to what kind of uh, service we sold, or purchased in this case, because we're doing a purchase. In the item field, we can put in exactly how many of a particular item we bought which would go in this bill column here. So we, if we bought five bottles of water, then this is where we would put it. We'd put in the item number, uh, the bottles of water, so we've just got to find those. Hmm. We'd actually have the bottles of water I was looking for. Uh, we're just going to go with large coolers then, that's fine, it still serves for the example. If we purchase five large coolers, it will automatically put in the set price for it, which you put in when you're setting up the item, and calculate the total that we're going to owe the supplier. <coughs> now, to keep things simple, we're just going to use the service layout, and you can use the service layout for buying items like spring water. I know that you're probably thinking, well, if we're buying spring water, shouldn't we use the item layout? We should, uh, but for the purposes of this example and for a sales return, it's much more simple just to use the, the uh, service layout. So we're going to do it that way. I'm just gonna put spring water here in the description and choose 5-1200. The amount was 1,100, and there should be GST on that. If I go ahead and record, and that's the purchase recorded. Now on the next day, we paid them for the full balance owing on that purchase order. So we've just got to go pay bills, choose the account we're going to pay from, we'll just use the bank account, put in the supplier, check the date is correct, and then pay the full balance owing. So we can see down here, this is where all the purchase orders would show up for this particular supplier. Now we've only bought one thing of this supplier, so we only have the one purchase order showing, and we're going to pay the full balance of that. Now, lots of students would put that in and click record, and then be very confused when they see this error pop up. An unbalanced transaction may not be recorded. Our out of balance, is not zero, so we can't record it. What that means is I've forgotten to click in this box here, amount applied, and put in the full balance owing. Okay, so our out of balance is now zero, and we can record. If you ever see something in finance charge, say $1,100 was sitting here, you know you've made a mistake. You need to delete it out of finance charge, 
and put it up here against the correct purchase order number. Otherwise, Mile won't know which purchase order you're paying off. Okay, so 1A and B are finished now, and we're going to move on to recording a sale. And this is revision again from two videos ago. So it's John. He's come in on the 6th of June. <clears throat> Invoice number is 1101. And he's bought spring water from us. Wet to use account for 1100. And he's bought $840 worth. Okay. It is saying to be paid within 30 days. Now, I didn't do this for the previous uh, question, and it was incorrect. But in order to record the terms, you use this one up here. So click the arrow. Now, if it's pa to be paid within 30 days, we need to choose in a given number of days, 30 for the balance due. And say OK, because we're not going to offer any discounts. All right, so that's everything we need to put in for that credit sale. So I can go ahead and record it. Now, on the same day, John comes back in and he advises us that $420 of what he bought is rancid and needs to be thrown out. So we're going to offer to credit him for that $420. So the way we do that is a credit note. Now, there are two steps to this. And I'll drill that into you as many times as I can. There are two steps to a return. The first step is to record the credit note. The way we do that is exactly the same way that we record the sale. So credit sales are in here. We put in John. Choose the correct date for the return, which was the 6th. Now for the invoice number, usually we'll be told that it's going to be credit note 1. Now we're not told that over here, but... Usually you will be told something like that. We're returning spring water. The account will just be the same account that we used for the sale because it's still spring water. Now this is the only thing that's different. For 2A, what we did was we recorded positive $840 and that was a credit sale. So how do you think we're going to do a return? We're just going to put a negative in front for the amount of the return, which is 420. So it's the exact same process as a sale, but you put this little negative sign in. All right, now I said this was two steps. We've recorded the first step, the credit note. The second step involves tying these two together. So at the moment, We've recorded the credit sale. We've recorded the credit note. But we haven't told Myob that this one is related to this one. We need to tie them together. Now the way we do that is by going into Sales Register, Returns and Credits, find the credit note that you recorded, and then apply to sale. Now we're starting to run out of time in this video, so I'm going to end it here, and there'll be a part two.